a group of first graders decided to present their own updated version of the nativity scene. Now, all the figures you would expect to be there were there. Shepherds, magi, angels, Joseph. But one was missing. It was Mary. And then from behind some bales of hay on the stage, we hear some moaning and groaning. That's because Mary was there in labor. Now that was the cue for the little first grade doctor to come up with his white coat on and his little black bag to take Joseph and to go behind those bales of hay. And after a moment or two, he comes out holding the baby in his arms and announces the good news to the world. It's a God. <laughs> those first graders, they understood in the Christmas season just ended. We have been celebrating that God, that God chose to take flesh as an infant born of Mary. And it's really hard to take in, I think, for us sometimes. It almost just becomes words for us. I'll bet that night those first graders helped some of those folks see it all anew, which is really our invitation every Christmas season to try to see it all anew, to spend some time trying to reflect on the incredible goodness, humility, love of a God who would so want to be with us and love us that became human flesh and infant. Now, the Christmas season has ended. We've taken our decorations down. We no longer have our nativity sets to look at Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Instead, today, we have John the Baptist almost taking our faces in his hands and saying, see the grown-up Jesus. And he gives us the words, behold him, behold him. Now, if we did what John asks, what would we find if we did behold Jesus? What would we see? I mean, what does it even mean to behold anyone, much less Jesus? Now, these days we don't use the word behold very often. You don't hear sentences like this, and I, I wouldn't try this at home. Behold, honey, I brought home a gallon of milk from the grocery store. <laughs> Though we don't use the word very often, it does have a rich biblical history. Mary says to the angel of herself, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Or when a grown-up Jesus had been scourged and whipped, Pilate brings him before the crowd and says, Behold the man. And from the cross, Jesus sees Mary and John and says, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And today, John the Baptist says of Jesus to us, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him. To behold someone means to hold them with our eyes, to let them in, to open a space inside of ourselves where we let ourselves be affected by them, change, make a difference. Beholding is a powerful spiritual practice. You've most likely done some beholding without ever naming it as such. You know, there's someone in your family in the hospital or on hospice, and as they are sleeping, you behold them. There's someone you're in love with, and when they're not looking and they don't notice this, you just take them in, you behold them. If you're parents of an infant, you, you spend a chunk of time just 
looking at this child, trying to take in this wonder with your eyes. You behold your child. Sometimes when I stand up here or see you working at some event, I behold you. I've been blessed to be here long enough now to know, you know a number of your life stories, to know some of what you've been through, and to more and more know your goodness. And I like to behold that goodness. I like to behold you. And it seems true that if we don't sometimes take time to behold the people in our lives, those relationships suffer for that. Even in a long-term relationship, it's important sometimes to behold one another. And one word of caution, when we behold someone, we often find a bit of a stirring inside, a sense of feeling responsible for and committed to the one we behold. And when we behold others, we deepen our capacity to also behold Christ. We To do what John the Baptist says of Jesus today, behold him, he says. In other words, let him make a difference. Let him be real to you. Take him in. He's the one. And if we did behold Jesus, what would we find we might just find comfort. With or without words, we hear Jesus say, I'm here. You don't have to be afraid. Be at peace. As we are with Jesus, we might instead find a, a sense of invitation to next to take that next step towards becoming a more alive and loving human being, to do the next right thing for ourselves and for this world. Or in the eyes of Jesus, we might see that look of forgiveness we've never received but should have, or that look we've never been able to give ourselves or whatever one might find when one beholds the one who is all love. When we do behold him, something changes in us. Our first graders held up the baby and announced the good news for all the world to behold, it's a God. And today, John the Baptist takes our eyes from the infant Jesus and turns up to and says, to the grown up Jesus and says, Behold him. Behold him. And if we do, something will change in us. <laughs>